Welcome back to Also's Microsoft 365 Copilot series with Cyberqueen. Today we're taking a practical look at setting up and using Microsoft 365 Copilot. In this guide, we'll walk through setting up Microsoft 365 Copilot and onboarding your team to be able to use Copilot. We'll also be clarifying the differences between the Bing version of Copilot and the full Microsoft 365 Copilot experience. So understanding these distinctions can help you to decide what's better for yourself and for your business. Hi, I'm Venetia. I'm the founder of Cyberqueen. I'm a cloud security architect and a Microsoft MVP. Together with Also, we bring you practical insights packed with expert advice on navigating the future of AI in your business. So let's jump right into this and start setting up Microsoft 365 Copilot. All right, before we begin, let's check off some prerequisites to make sure that Microsoft 365 Copilot will work seamlessly for you and your team. The first thing is to ensure that you have a Microsoft 365 subscription tier that includes Copilot access. Now, not all plans will provide this, so you need to confirm your license type. This is really important. The next thing is that your devices should be on the current channel or monthly enterprise channel. This ensures that you get the latest Microsoft 365 updates. So the current channel and monthly enterprise channel updates are channels that determine how frequently your Microsoft 365 apps receive updates. And finally, every user must have a Microsoft Intra ID account. Intra ID manages your user authentication, securing your environment from any unauthorized access. Now with the prereqs in place, let's start with the setup and configuration of Microsoft 365 in the 365 admin center. All right, to do this, you will sign into admin.microsoft.com. And here you'll use your administrator credentials. Now for this, it's really important that you are a Microsoft 365 admin or you need to have an admin in your organization to enable the settings for Copilot. The next step is to head over to Copilot and to select buy. So if you don't already have access to Microsoft 365 Copilot license, you can now purchase the license here. If you have access to the licenses, you can skip this step. The next thing is to actually assign the licenses. So you'll navigate to the billing section and then select the applicable users and assign the Microsoft 365 Copilot license. All right. Finally, in the admin center, you will now go to settings, integrated apps and toggle enable Microsoft 365 Copilot for your organization. So this will make Copilot features accessible in all of the supported applications. All right. Next, let's talk a little bit about user onboarding. So bringing everyone up to speed on Microsoft 365 Copilot's capabilities will maximize productivity and ensure they're comfortable with the tool and with how to use Copilot. So the first thing that I recommend that's really important is communicating the benefits of Microsoft 365 Copilot and explaining which apps and tasks it can help with. So drafting documents, generating data insights, managing emails, etc. The next thing is also to provide applicable training resources. So Microsoft does provide useful video tutorials, quick start guides, and user support documentation to help new users to navigate Copilot. For training, I also recommend that you have a look at the also educational videos and the training portal, which are great to help you along with the use and complete utilization of Microsoft 365 Copilot. The next thing is to set up an accessible support channel. So this can be on Microsoft Teams to help users with any issues, questions, or troubleshooting to really ensure that you are getting the best education and user experience onboarding. Now, let's have a look at how to access and make the most out of Microsoft 365 Copilot. So Copilot can be accessed in a few different ways. So firstly, you can launch Copilot features directly from the Microsoft apps like Word, Excel, Outlook, and Teams. So simply open one of these apps and you'll find Copilot prompts and suggestions integrated right into the interface. Now, I do recommend starting with some simpler commands. For example, ask Copilot to generate an email draft or provide a summary of data trends and then refine these outputs to suit your needs. 
Now you can always easily access Copilot in your browser by going to copilot.microsoft.com. All right, let's take a moment to discuss the differences between Bing Copilot and Microsoft 365 Copilot. The one key distinction to keep in mind is that Bing's free Copilot version is a different experience compared to the Microsoft 365 Copilot that we've just enabled. So Bing is the free version. It's available through the Bing search interface and it is really tailored to the general public use. It provides general information and insights rather than tailored and customized information and document specific assistance. Now Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is the paid version that we've just enabled, is designed for productivity in Microsoft apps. So it's integrated with business documents, emails and data offering suggestions and automations that are uniquely useful in your own workplace setting. So enabling Microsoft 365 Copilot really ensures that you're getting the most out of AI in your business by connecting it with your own data and processes enhancing productivity in your team. Now with Copilot Setup, you're well equipped to explore how AI can streamline work for you and your team by simplifying day-to-day -day operations. Are you excited to dive into Copilot, but you do need some help to get started? Definitely check out the description box and reach out to Also. They're here to help you every step of the way. In our next episode, we will demonstrate Copilot in action for everyday tasks, from email management to scheduling and task automation. So until next time, remember to use your co-pilot to increase your productivity.